Well everybody, from the title of this video, Apple finally gave us iPadOS 18.2 Developer Beta 1, and of course iOS as well as macOS 18.2 and 15.2 also came out, but this is going to be the Apple Intelligence update that gives us all those rich features that Apple has been promising. With 18.1, we got some of those basic AI features like the new Siri animations, the writing tools, but this time around, we're getting all those awesome creative features that Apple's been talking about since the very beginning, like image playgrounds, gen emoji, visual intelligence, and everything in between. So sit back, grab a notepad, and learn exactly what 18.2 is going to be bringing to your current iOS or iPadOS device. Let's get into it. Well, alright everyone, let's hop right into this video, and we do have a lot to unpack here. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is with the build size and the build number as per usual. Then we'll get into all those new awesome features which you might have seen already by the home screen. But this is what we get with 18.2 Beta 1 on iPadOS. It's about 2.6 gigs. Give yourself at least 5, maybe even 6 gigabytes of open storage in order to get this installed and installed correctly. And then if we go into our settings and then go into our build number, so we go to general, go to about, go to the iPadOS version. Again, this is going to be the first version. So we're all the way on the moniker P. It is 22C5109 lowercase p. So this is gonna be the first one, and the expectation is that we're gonna get new updates every two weeks for the first few, and then ultimately by the end of December is when the public should be getting 18.2. So this is in beta one, expect a lot of bugs, a lot of performance issues, maybe some resets, maybe some overheating, but again, if you do wanna jump onto it, I've never actually bricked my iPad or had any data loss with any of these beta programs dating all the way back to iPad OS 13 when it first announced. But let's jump right into the first thing that we noticed, which is going to be the Playgrounds app. So the first thing that I'm going to mention is this Playgrounds app will show up on your home screen. That wasn't there before I updated and now it is. But when you first go into the image playground, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to ask you to be able to request early access. So very similar to when we first got 18.1 beta and when you first installed 18.1, you're going to need to add yourself to the waitlist for Apple Intelligence and the same thing is going to happen for all the image creation aspects, not just image playground. So it's gonna account for image playgrounds, Genmoji, as well as image wand. And then finally, this is what's gonna happen after the fact, early access requested. And then after about five or 10 minutes, at least that's how long it took for mine, you get a little pop-up notification saying that you now have access to image playgrounds and you're able to use all the different things that they mentioned in there. So let's hop right into image playgrounds and show you guys what it actually looks like and how to actually use it. So. This is what it looks like. This is not the first thing you're gonna see. The first thing you're gonna see is going to be when you press this plus sign, this will be the very first thing that you see when you first open it up. Before, that's kind of just a dashboard of what's been created already. But this is what it's gonna look like in terms of image creation in Image Playgrounds. And there's a couple different sections to take into account. Basically, you have your suggestions down here, which is going to be a person, and then a couple of different prompts and categories that you can choose from. You also have the ability to actually type to Siri or Apple Intelligence what you want in the image from a description standpoint. You can choose a different person from your images themselves, and then also change the style and animation, as well as pick a photo. So basically what you can do here is you can actually tap into these to add them on here. So if I want to do something with my face, and let's say I want to do something with royalty, it's going to start to mix these together, but I also want to be, look like an artist. I can actually show more, and I want this to be maybe in a fantasy world. So now it's going to combine all these different things to create something that does fit those criteria. So you can see that it does kind of fit everything. You can see my face, you can see that I have a crown, you can see that I'm in the back, and it gives you a few different options. And then the longer you wait, more and more options will arise. So you can see here, you can even thumbs up, thumbs it down for feedback. And then finally, you have your three dots here to copy, share it, or save this image. And then what's nice about this is that you can actually tap on here into the animation, press illustration, and then you get a completely different style as you can see right here. So again, that's me, but in an illustration as opposed to an animated style. If I wanna type something out here, maybe say, so wearing a Miami Heat jersey, we'll put that in, and then it's gonna take that prompt in that category, tap in here, and again, it's gonna be tough because there's so many other things kind of showing up. Maybe if I got rid of the royalty and got rid of the artist and just kept me in the fantasy land, Tap in here again and see, maybe you see a little bit of a jersey on the first one. It's kind of showing those colors over here. Oh, there's a Miami Heat logo. But again, when you work with specific IPs, it could be a hit or miss situation. And also keep in mind that a couple things that I noticed is that for the most part, it keeps all the images from the shoulders up. And if you try to add, let's say something with multiple people, it'll actually tell you that you cannot use multiple people and to pick an image with only one person. 
And then to show off a couple more options, if you tap on the person here, there's actually a couple of predetermined people on here that you've maybe named in the past or something like that. So again, if I wanna tap on this one, which is my brother, and you can see that it does pop up pretty well. And it's keeping the same different criteria that I mentioned before. So it still has the Miami Heat jersey, as well as being in a fantasy land. So again, you can do whatever you see fit with those situations. So if I wanna do one more here, a little sunset, and you can kinda of just play with this for as long as you want. And I've been playing with this for a little while now, and it is relatively fun to see exactly what Apple spits out. And then when you are done with it, you just press done, it'll save it, and then you can see that it's right there. We'll, we'll go back, and now it gets added into my library or my dashboard. So that is going to be Image Playgrounds in a nutshell, and you'll see that as we go on, it's gonna be very familiar across the entire OS. So now let's get into Genmojis and let's open up the notes application. Let's press return, return. Just type in hello in here. And let's say you wanna leave an actual emoji. So you can see here that we have all of our different emojis over here that you can choose from as well as stickers, but there is a new button that gets added. So we press this button right here and this is gonna be your Genmoji kind of prompt situation. So you can express yourself, describe your Genmoji you wanna create, personalize a Genmoji or use Genmoji like an emoji. So add to a message, respond with a tap back or share as a sticker. So we're gonna do this live together and I'm gonna want a dolphin in a basketball jersey. We'll press done and you can see that that emoji is popping up. And again, it gives you a few different options. So you have this one, you have here. Again, they look a little bit wonky. I'm not gonna to lie to you, but this one might look the best. We'll thumbs this one up because we like it to give feedback. And then we'll press add. And then it gets added as a regular emoji. And as you can see before, I actually made one here, which is gonna be myself as a Miami Dolphins player. So you can get really creative with your different emojis if you want to. So I'm gonna do a car in a city and these are all live prompts we're doing together for the first time. You can see that it basically took the emoji of the car and emoji of a cityscape and added them together. And we can add those right here. And again, they turn into an emoji and they can be used the same exact way that an emoji gets used. So that's a nice little feature. So that's gonna be a nice feature moving forward that I can see a lot of people having fun with. So now let's get into this magic wand situation, especially for us iPad users, which are gonna take full advantage of this. So I actually pre you these, I kind of sketched something together to be able to use magic wand. But you can see that down here in your tools, you have a brand new tool down here, and this is gonna be your magic wand. And essentially what this does is that if you circle anything that you hand drew or sketched, or even if you have an open space with maybe a bunch of written notes around it, it'll then try to recreate the image that you were describing or you're sketching into something that's a little bit more usable. So here, if you just wanna circle this, that's all you have to do, just circle it. And then it's gonna ask you in a few words, maybe what you're trying to describe. So it is gonna ask you for a small little written prompt just to get an idea to help it out. But I'm gonna say a globe on a pedestal. We'll send this over. It's gonna use the image as well as the globe on a pedestal prompt. And you can see that it turned my image into that, which is pretty incredible. I mean, it's pretty spot on of what I wanted it to be. It, this happened live in real time. You can, And then again, you can copy, share, or save the image. And you can press cancel and press done. If I press done, then it'll keep that image right there for me. And you can actually use it as any other image, which can be used after the fact. And now if I wanna do the same thing over here, let's actually circle everything here. Same thing's gonna happen. I'm just gonna type in home to let it kind of use the image. And boom, there it is. It kind of took everything into account. It took the rounded door into account, the chimney, it took the two little sides over here, the way that it triangles up over there. And again, there's options that you can choose from. So if you swipe through, there's a couple different things you can choose from. Pick the one that you want. This one to me probably looks the most obvious, but we're gonna press done here. And then again, it is now an image that is saved onto your notes application. So again, the sky is the limit when it comes to being able to sketch something, have a super rough draft, maybe even create thumbnails and then eventually use these to really kind of hone in on exactly what you want from an image that you're willing to share after the fact. And now next up, let's talk ChatGPT. I'm gonna show it in the notes, but the first thing I'm gonna bring up is going to be in the settings. If we go into Apple Intelligence and Siri, you now have a brand new section called ChatGPT, which is the Extend Apple Intelligence and Siri. If you go in here, we do have a couple options. So of course you're gonna to wanna to toggle this on if that's something that you wanna do. And once you do activate it, you get this prompt right here to let you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And then secondly, they give you a privacy notice of everything that you're dealing with. So again, privacy is at the forefront when it comes to ChatGPT. And then you have two options when it comes to the type of GPT that you have. So you have the non-paid version, which is gonna to be totally fine. But if you do have your own personal account that I can then take context from, from ChatGPT, you can then sign into it right there, which I do have my own personal ChatGPT account to be able to use the latest version of ChatGPT. But now ChatGPT is going to be integrated into your entire OS. So there's gonna be two main ways to activate it, at least for right now. The first one is gonna be through your regular writing tool. So if I wanna go in here, tap on my actual writing tools, you can actually do two new things. First, you can describe your change on an already written text. So if these aren't enough for you, you can actually describe what you want it to be. So for instance, if I go over here, let's highlight this, press the writing tool, describe the change. I'm gonna say, make it super formal. We're gonna send that in. It's gonna work its magic and let's see what it does. 
So it says evaluating the novel functionalities of version 18.2. So you can see that it did that as a prompt that I gave it. Now that's gonna be on device and that's not using GBT. But now if I go down here, let's say if I wanna type something out and I actually wanna compose something from scratch, let's say I want a, maybe a recipe for chicken salad. I'll type that in. So we'll press done here and then you can see the chicken salad recipe is right here with instructions, ingredients and everything in between. So it's literally like you have ChatGPT integrated into every single aspect of your OS, especially when it comes to actually writing text out. So I think that's gonna be a great use case moving forward for any aspect, whether it's just a regular message, an iMessage, notes and everything in between. And then finally, the last way that I wanna interact with ChatGPT is gonna be via Siri and I wanna show off exactly what that looks like. So if we go into Siri, I'm gonna ask it a contextual question like who's older? Tua Tonga Bailoa or Dan Marino? So as you can see here, it's gonna ask us to pull up ChatGPT to get that information. And then it'll give me the correct answer based on ChatGPT. And this is gonna be great for things that are a little bit more recent and, and things that aren't just historical. So that's when it reaches out to ChatGPT and every single time that it happens, it's gonna ask me if I wanna use ChatGPT for that and it gives me the correct answer. So. Definitely let me know in the comment down below if you want a nuanced look at every single section. I definitely plan on making it for at least a few of these to make sure that everybody's aware of all the different features, but this is just a quick little look. And lastly, be sure to check out the iOS version video we're gonna post because there's a couple other additional things that were added like visual intelligence, as well as changes to the mail application, which of course iPadOS didn't get. But let's finish up this video. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. In my opinion, the headliner here, especially for iPadOS, is going to be the image wand. Image wand is gonna really transform how we're able to dictate and show off certain aspects of a note-taking device or some sort of presentation to be able to take these rough sketches or even some sort of prompt or notes and turn that into an actual tangible image that can then be shared across all your different media types. So to me, that's definitely the highlighting feature of 18.2 on iPadOS. Of course, things like visual intelligence are finally coming out to 18.2 point two on the iOS side and I'll leave a link down below for Jeff's video on iOS which is going to be a very in-depth video for you guys to check out but that'll do it for this one let me know in the comment down below if you're updating to 18.2 developer beta 1 of course there's going to be some bugs there's going to be some performance issues probably a lot of resets and things are going to start getting warm especially from a hardware perspective Again, we've only had this for a couple hours, so it's hard for me to say exactly how stable it is, but definitely check in towards the end of the week or maybe next week to give you guys my overall review of what 18.2 and iPadOS is like, especially from a bug and performance issue standpoint. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the very end of this video, leave a dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end, and leave a comment down below of what your favorite feature is and what you're most looking forward to. But if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we got some awesome content right around the corner like some iPad Mini 7 stuff that we just picked up. But that'll do it, everybody. Until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.